Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about real estate trends for senior housing. Now this is a hidden housing boom that's already kind of booming, but a lot of people are asking me, you know, what the up and coming trends are in multi-housing. For me, there's a huge hidden housing market that's about to explode and all you have to do is look for the changing demographics of the country to see it. As always guys, there's a ton of work that goes into these videos. Please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell all those things that I'm supposed to tell you. Just please do that, share this around, tell people, because it really does help. I love doing this stuff. I want everybody to make a lot of money in the future. Right now, the elderly population in America is booming, and not just in America. Households headed by a person age 65 or older will jump from 24 million in 2015 to 32 million by 2025. That figure will grow even higher to 38 million by 2035, an overall increase of 62%. That demand, my friends, is why I love investing in senior housing. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get started investing in senior living right now. Senior housing can be a development of condos, apartments, or detached houses where residents have the option of renting or buying depending on their needs and the type of development. My favorite type of senior housing is what's known as active adult communities. And these are the kinds that we own. Active adult is popular with investors because these communities are aimed at adults 55 and up. Some are even age restricted. Most importantly, there is not a healthcare component to active adult living. So you don't need to worry about that. Adult living is basically the same as a multifamily property, but with a minimum age of 55. Of course, this demographic wants lots of amenities, such as workout rooms, pools, a community center with lots of activities for residents. So it's a bit like creating an apartment community that's also a resort. The next category, the assisted living facilities, typically have a team of nurses, doctors, and other trained specialists, which typically require a level of involvement that defeat the purpose of investing for passive income because you have lots of regulations and liability exposure, and sometimes this can be a non-starter for me. But if you're determined to get into the assisted living facility market, one option is renting your property to an assisted living facility operator or a third party management company. If you pursue this, I would definitely talk to an attorney to get completely clear on what your obligations and liabilities may be. Different states have different regulations, so make sure that you know what's required where you live or where you're investing. If you're interested in dipping your foot in the water of senior housing, a great way to start is by investing in a real estate investment trust or REIT, R-E-I-T. There are several REITs that specialize specifically in the senior care industry that can provide a diversified exposure to senior housing. This requires no active management of the facilities because they're managed by the REIT directly. There are a couple things to keep in mind when investing in a senior housing property. Unlike other multifamily properties, you can only rent to a specific segment of the population. While there may be elderly people everywhere, you won't necessarily have the level of demand you'll need for your property in every single market. For places like Florida or Arizona, you can count on high demand for senior living, and you can see those trends. In other parts of the country, like New England or the Midwest, you see the elderly moving to warmer parts of the country, so it may be a less reliable prospect. The other thing to consider is that for some residents, you may be competing against other traditional multifamily properties that are less expensive because they aren't as loaded with amenities as your property. As with all real estate, there is some risk, but I love senior housing. My favorite investment in this area is active adult. But if you decide to invest in a different type of senior housing, just be mindful of the additional responsibilities involved. Regardless of which aspect of senior housing you invest in, all of it is in high demand right now. And that demand will only increase in the years to come. So now let's go to the whiteboard so we can look at some of the graphs. So you guys can take a look at exactly what I look for when I'm looking to invest. So this is how I stumbled on senior housing. So if you take a look at it, again, as I like to say, you just need to follow the math. So the first thing, when I started to really take a look at this, 
Take a look at this, guys. These are the U.S. births from 1940 to 1980. And why is that important? Well, let's take a look at where we are right now. We're in obviously 2020. So if you're down here, you're now 40 years old. So all you gotta do is kind of take a look at the births. But this is a massive demographic of things that you need to take a look for. And you can see what happened during these baby boomer years. Obviously, these are families when they got back from the military, they started having lots of kids. And these are the kids from the, which is now called the baby boomer generation. This is 78 million people, guys. This is 4, 4 million or 4.5 million births a year. Now, as I said, there's also a chart you can look at on the death side. But for this, we're just going to try to look at future demand. And where all these people move to, where they end up, that, of course, is a whole nother video. But the point is, you can see this pending demand coming here. And so there's a lot of businesses that happen as a result of these live births. You can also do the same thing in these other years as you look at the supply and demand as it relates to real estate. So there's one really important statistic that I want you guys to pay attention to here. And that is, in the year of 2030, baby boomers will be between the ages of 66 and 84. And what will happen is this will result in the greatest demand ever on our social security and healthcare. And so these are trends, guys, that are coming regardless of you're ready for them or not. They're definitely coming. So that's what I mean by following the math. So now the real question is how do you utilize that information and how do you solve the problem, which as you guys know, I love to say. So right now, these baby boomers are retiring at about 10,000 every single day. And that's way up from 5,000 just 20 years ago. And this census project says that it's gonna be closer to 12,000 a day. So all you gotta do is go back and, and correlate this to the live births, and then you can kind of project this out. And so what they've done is they've showed that we're gonna have some pretty good years all the way up from 2020 to 2015. These are all people retiring. This is 10,000, this is 14,000 per day. And what that means is all kinds of demographics are going to happen. People are going to move. People are going to need health care. People are going to need senior housing. People are going to need assistant care. They're going to need all kinds of things. So this is an opportunity for you guys. As you can tell, it's significantly up from just 20 to 30 years ago. Another chart that I wanted to show you is this one, which is the aging population. Okay, here we are right here, guys. So you can see we've got a little bit of window, and then this is going to go back down again, based again on live births. So we're going to have this spike, but it's going to be here a long time. And again, just solve the problem. Be in front of this. This is definitely happening, whether you do it or not. These people are going to get older, they're going to move around, and they're going to look for all kinds of goods and services. And if you can accommodate them and solve this problem, you can do very well for yourself and your investors. So the last chart that I wanted to show you is at some point, the people who are over 65 are gonna cross past the kids. And this is the under 18 year old line. And this is the over 65 line. And as you can see, this is gonna happen somewhere between 2035. And so these are very important demographics, especially if you, if you take a look at the difference that we have right now. So now we've just taken a look at the past. As you guys can see, the majority of the population that grew by age from 2010 to 2020 was over the age of 55, you can see that. But now you guys wanna go to the next chart, which of course is the number of births in the United States through 2019. And so that's where we're heading next. And this is 4 million, 5 million, 3 million. So you can kind of get an idea of what's gonna happen from a population and demographic. Just use history to be your guide as you decide where to invest and what to do in your future. And that's kind of the point by watching these trends as people age out and it will help you make better decisions for yourself and for your investors in the future. And uh, this channel is all about education, so thank you.